Okay guys, here we go. I'm telling you all about how I plan my garden here at my vintage farm. One of the things that you are going to need is file tabs. I got these on Amazon and they're very easy to use. I use these for a lot of different things and you'll see here as we go, but um, I make sure I get all different colors because I like to color code everything. Um, so you guys get it? Lots of tabs. <clears throat> okay, next, you need a planner. You can use a digital planner on your phone. I like to have a physical planner like right now. Mine has just this little rubber band thing that comes on it. I need to write in there that we got the greenhouse ready yesterday. This way next year I know on December 5th, I can look back on this. This right here is like my farmer's, farmer's almanac for our farm. So I can look back on years past and say, you know what, on this day, I was able to get this done. And then like I can critique it because like this year I can leave myself notes, which I will with these. So say um, here, our last frost date is supposed to be... I want to say it's like Feb the beginning of February. So like within like the first week of February, I think it's February 8th. So, so say that we didn't get a frost. So say like we just had a good season. I can go back and put this note right over that date. Okay. And I can write on here last frost. Um, let's just say it was January 29th. Okay, so I'm gonna do 1, 29, 20. Okay. Okay, guys. So, like I was saying, I can go back and leave notes over everything. So that way, I still have my original note under here. It doesn't, oh, it does leave green. So these ones do leave a green hue. Oh, no, no. Okay. That's a layer that came up. I think. There we go. Okay. I was gonna say, what happened? It's actually two of them. So when I grab one, I grab two. So you see there, my original thing, and I can put it over it. And these are actually big enough to where you can put it over too, and you can just write right over it there. It also works too if you're trying to do a tentative thing. And so say right now, if we weren't in the trailer and I had my desk and everything, I could leave this on my desk and I could put these over each day, okay? And I could use a dry erase marker and I can write out what I would like to have done in what time frame. And then if I did it and I did it on that day, I could take that up. So sorry guys, I can, let me just go like this so it's easier. So I could lift it off of the day. So I'm like, okay, it's the fifth and the sixth. I could say, okay, I got that done. So for that day, I just lift it up and then I can put it permanently on my calendar here. That to me is huge because I don't like mistakes. I don't write in books. I don't highlight in my Bible. <laughs> I have a very hard time writing in devotionals. Um, I just, I am a perfectionist in some areas where things just bother me. So these are my way that I can do things and do it the right way. And if I don't want to write in there, then I can use these and they don't damage the pages. So I think I ordered mine for about like 10 bucks, $9 or something. And I got about maybe 600 of them. I use a lot, so that's why I said like I'd rather buy. And they come in individual packs of two. I'm not sure how many is in each pack, maybe like 20 or 30. Now, if you flip in, I love this, okay? Now here is where I can give details. So a lot of times people use this to plan out their days and they'll write each, you know, section of that. I use this as like a journal. And so I'll go in and I'll make a journal entry for each day. And this is for my entire farm. So even though this is my gardening journal, it's gonna help me to know if I was trimming hooves that day or if I had to vaccinate, if I had to um, give warmer, if I was putting out diatomaceous earth, if I had to spread out bedding, um, if it was a day that I went and picked up hay, all of that's gonna matter because when you are homesteading or farming, market gardening, um, more than likely you're doing more than one thing on your property and you're going to want to have it noted in here. 
Okay, these also have a place where you can stick receipts. Now, what I like to do is usually what I will do, if it's a farm receipt, um, and especially because of like how this is here, I will go ahead and I'll take my January page here for the 2020 and I will staple onto it another piece of paper. So for instance, let's just act like this clear thing here is another piece of paper. So I'm gonna staple that in right up to the top there. And then what I will do is I will fold and staple all of my receipts to this page. Um, and you'll see, I don't have a receipt in here. I haven't been doing any shopping or anything. So Josh would be the one to have receipts. Um, but so if it was like that, you could just see, like I would just take this here and I would staple it in and then underneath it here, I would lift up and then I would, I would fold all of my receipts to where they, um, were top to bottom and they may have to be filled, folded twice if it's a very long receipt, but if it is garden or farm related, um, depending on what it is, I will have another one of these for farm as well. And so they will get stapled into the appropriate month and it makes it so much easier for bookkeeping. So it's kind of an all-in-one um, way to do your farming and planning. Cause then when you go back, you can also note like, okay, this was what I spent. Um, although we always have things that can be reused for multiple years, um, it's good to know what you're putting in because if you are market gardening or farming, you want to know your costs so that way you can know what to price things at. Um, it would be great to be able to give everything away for free, but in order for us to have free programs, we have to sell some stuff. And in order to give things a fair price, we need to know our investment and then how we can have profit. Most of us don't get paid for our time. <laughs> like we put a number on our items, but our time is not really included, but eventually it will be right now. It's kind of hard to account for that. And, um, and our budget for seeds. I have a lot of seeds that were purchased last year when I was sick. So I will actually have a real budget this year because it's almost going to be like I gifted myself a bunch of cost. <laughs> and so, um, hopefully that just means that we're going to see more of a profit on some things. Now there's some seeds. I lost a ton of seeds. We spent thousands of dollars in seeds last year. And unfortunately when the house, um, had mold in it and everything had to be moved out, I had like two or three boxes and by boxes, they're like, they're big boxes because I'll show you guys, like this is one of my bins. So I buy my seeds wholesale. You can see these ones come from Osborne Seeds. I love them. Um, they are, um, it says here that they're out of Washington, but they have a seed bank here in um, Stockton. It's been there forever. They were just like joined, but my names on these because I buy these bulk and so I get my own sticker on them which great is that not only can I grow these but I can package them and I can sell them so that's another great thing to do um, so I've got my zinnias here those ones I bought off the shelf you can see they don't have my name on them but then here you can see my cosmos I ordered those in and they have my name on them and that's our farm name my vintage farm I really like being able to see that though so I can make up little seed packs I can also do it for gifts or fundraisers um, and use these seeds to make gift baskets and whatnot I really like doing that um, but I lost a lot of seeds my tomatoes tomatoes um, they are one of the more in, um, expensive seeds um, that I purchased, especially buying in bulk. Bulk tomato seeds are very expensive. Unfortunately, that is one of my boxes that got lost. So I probably lost about a thousand dollar in seeds, at least with just my tomato box alone. And there's another box too. And there was a bucket. So, um, I lost a lot of seeds off that back on topic. Okay. So you guys see my planner. I've showed you guys kind of how I do things here. 
Um, you write your notes in every day. You can also write in here like your budget. If you spent anything, write it on the day that you spent it. You can refer back to your receipts, but it kind of gives you a rough estimate you can run through and just kind of know without having to open up every receipt. Um, you can even have like um, little codes like HD for Home Depot, 45 bucks. You can have, you know, TSC for Tractor Supply Co. And you can do like, you know, $190, um, you know, Ace for Ace Hardware, uh, Low for Lowe's, you know, you can do um, just kind of like give yourself some little codes for each one. That way you can, you can kind of find out where you're spending your money, when you're spending your money, and it helps you create a budget for next year because each great plan needs a budget. Um, and even if you don't have your plan set out yet, you still have to start with a budget because if not, you'll never make money. So here, I buy these at the beginning of the year. I have a whole case under here. Praise God that these were not in the house. I thought I lost them all. They were in my truck. So luckily that's like some great things about not feeling well is I couldn't lift things. I left them in my truck. And so I actually had notepads and here you can see I put my tabs in. So as I start to fill up a notepad, this one says vision. So it's just some things that I have for vision. And this right here is the layout guys. So I have drawn this out. Now eventually I'll go ahead and like do it, which I already had a file um, on my computer, but my printer's gone, my laptop's gone, those both had to be ditched. So back to pen and paper, but I will have it to where I can um, copy it out. And then back to my stickies again, okay? Now these basic sticky labels are so simple okay because now this here this is my garden space so this is the um i want to say this is the neighbor's place here and this is the part coming out to from our driveway so either way um these can be cut into whatever size you need them to be and you can put them in different areas on your paper and then you can draw over it and you can say okay this right here is the cow pin okay and then it's on there but it's not permanent guys I can tear that right on out of there okay just like that tear it on out so there's that and I love to use those for that reason because sometimes when I'm designing something I don't know if that's exactly where I want it so I can go ahead and put things around the farm and the great thing is is that I can leave them there I can move them around I definitely would draw a lot nicer than that though and I wouldn't have wrote cow pin on it right away I would have uh, probably wrote that down here and the description done it like really really nice but I was just doing that to show you guys real quick so there's that um, so definitely like as you're, I've got lists in here that I just wrote out. And so I leave those in cause I like to go back and just see the things. So here's my 2020 goals. I've got, um, the garden plan, just the different things that I take in. Um, so I can go back and look at that. Here is a to-do list, um, another to-do list and a log hut that was just like, I was drawing out a log hut, so I thought that was cute. I have all these um, tree stakes that I got from a company who does all of the landscaping for a few cities around me, big cities, bigger than I live in a little town. Um, and then <laughs> here's my, um, oh, this, is, this isn't this is my seed list. This is a to-do list from the, the driveway in. So as soon as our house is done um, and we can start... Well, as soon as the remediation is done, it's safe and there's nothing that's being like, um, you know, stirred up out there anymore and I can go out there. So this is my to-do list of everything I'd like to have done. Just the basic, nothing more than the general things that need to be done for us to be functioning again and have our business and have our farm running. Um, these are my seeds, 2020 seeds, okay? So this is the list of everything that I would like to order. And um, what I do is I go through the Baker Creek book and I write everything down that I want to grow, that I want to have. So I think I have like five or six pages this year. And then after I do that, I go back and I check and I go through what I already have on hand 
if I already have it on hand. Uh, so I will go ahead and mark that. And then I have these different colors. So highlighters are great. Although I had these really cool Sharpie highlighters, they're gone. But these right here come in highlighter colors. So then what I'll do is I will put in here on each page, I will put a little coat, like a little uh, map. So it'll have each color on it. And um, I'll probably put them coming up like this or out of the side. And then it'll be um, for if I have it on hand or if I have ordered it and then who I ordered it from. So right now I'm just pretty much ordering from MI Gardener, Osborne Seeds and Baker Creek. So I already have quite a lot of seeds from Baker Creek and I placed my order with MI Gardener and I have some that I've already ordered um, and have on hand from Osborne. So what I'll do now is I'll go through and I pretty much ordered a lot from MI Gardener. I'll go through and I will get anything that I can't get um, at Osborne and I'll order it off of Baker Creek. And then if I can get it at Osborne, I like to just drive over there and grab it because it's only a few minutes away and who doesn't like going to a good seed bank? Although it's not called Osborne. I am, I'm gonna figure out the name and then I'll let you guys know. They joined each other. So this one here, guys, I'd like to put a new big greenhouse in with a grant. I've got to trade my tractor in this year. So I put these things in there because this is a paper that when I need to go back to it, if I like start looking at notes or get any facts on it, I'll write it right in here. So that way I can go back and say, oh, okay, what was that? And who do I need to contact and blah, blah, blah. And I'll have that there. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I do that. And I love, um, having notebooks and keeping it organized because now it's, it's something I could reference to and then I can store these away. Um, I definitely recommend saving some of them silica gel packs and getting yourself a nice like um, filing cabinet of some sort or airtight bin and storing these away. At the end of the year I'll go ahead and write what year this was on there and I'll write the name of it so it'll say you know um, 2020 uh, farm and garden. And that's pretty much what this is dedicated to is just farm and garden. So we have 36 rows in our garden. And um, in order to be able to know what we're growing in each row um, and not doing it on here, because sometimes, as you know, you will grow more than one thing in each row. So back to our stickies. Um, simply right on here and I call mine a garden um, it is a farm guys this is it's a fairly I mean it's you know it's on acres so and it's going to be expanded as I run out of rows I'll put more rows in um, but the good thing is, is I can go like this and I would write row one here and then I would take here and let's just see, let's say that I put in some Cherokees, Cherokee purples. And then what I'll do on top of that guys is I'll write that, that they were, um, sewed on, let's see, we'll do one, hmm, let's do one, 10, 20. And then I would write transplanted. And we would transplant them about 2, 15, 20. This is roughly, guys. But so then what I do is now this goes even further to let me know, okay, I started my tomatoes on such and such date. So then I'm going to go ahead and put this in row one. So you guys can kind of see where this is going. This is going to be in row one. It's going to be the beginning of the first row there. And then I can add in a second item. We're going to say the same thing and say that we have started. Let's see. What's a, another one? Let's do shady lady. I don't think I'm doing shady ladies this year. 
but so shady lady we're gonna say that we sewed it the same day 1 10 20 and we're gonna transplant on 2 15 20. so that's really only about a five week um time before transplant probably be a little bit longer than that but this is just like i said drawing it up for you guys right now that way you guys can see that how i do it and then what's great is so say these shady ladies died out okay i can take this off of there it's so funny i'm grabbing two at a time so i could take that off of there okay and i can say you know what Shady ladies did not live. They're not there. So I went ahead and I put in some, um, let's do Berkeley tie dye. And we're going to say that we did the green and these were transplanted. We're going to say that we did these on three, 10, 20. So I waited a few weeks and they all died for some reason. And so then I went ahead and I replaced it with some Berkeley tie dye. Boom. Look at how cool that is guys. I can put it right over that and I can even, so say if I wanted to leave in there that I tried the shady ladies and they didn't work, I could even write another note on that saying like, you know, like have a little symbol, like an X and then have the Berkeley tie dye go right over that. And if I did that, I would go ahead and do it in a different color, like maybe red or something. So that way I know that this one was planted at a different time. So if I'm harvesting, I know that I'm going to be able to harvest off these Cherokee purples. Everything has a different, you know, time before the fruits there, but I'll know that these guys have a head start versus these ones. And so when I look in there, it looks like this. I'll show you guys more as I continue to go this year, but I really like having a sound plan. Um, I'll even go ahead and kind of draft something up and I'll write out all my rows and I'll, as I'm planting and sewing them in the greenhouse and getting them started, I'll know um, what I already have started. So I'll start to make up tags for each and every one of them, and then I'll be able to move them around on my garden plant. And that way, if I start planting and I'm like, whoa, Cherokee purple took up one entire row, like I over sewed, or maybe I got a little happy and wanted more purple. So I, you know, filled one whole row in with a certain kind, which like shady ladies is something I would definitely do that with because shady ladies, they're a bush type. They're super easy to grow here in California. They produce a lot and they produce for a long season. And so I'm able to harvest off them all, um, summer long, but I like diversity in my stand and in my delivery and my CSA delivery. So I really like to have a lot of different ones, but if I just did Cherokee, um, purple all in one, then I can take these and I can move them to row two. Okay. And now this is going to take a lot. Like I have, I literally have 37 rows. So right now, and I'll have more because I plan on putting two more sections in. Um, so I've got to go get more drip tape and I've got to go get more, um, hard line and stuff like that and fittings to do that. But I do plan on doing more now that I have my pump, which I have to find cause it got packed away, but it gives me that ability to grow more and, um, and to really use all the space that I have. So you can see here, super simple way to do your garden plan. Nothing's permanent. So it's like, Hey, switch it around because if you're like me, <laughs> These things get moved a lot because I start doing, I'm like, oh, I'll plant 10 and I plant a hundred and I'm like, okay, well, we're going to have this. Uh, we have new soil here. So not everything grows. Um, this year we're going to be doing some fertilizing, uh, foliar, for, foliar feeding for fertilizing, which will help because our soil doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it. And then we'll start adding some manures around the base of plants and stuff like that. So as it gets watered in, it'll start, you know, and we'll, and we'll start um, adding compost and stuff around and we will be building our soil. We'll add some wood chips into the walkways, got big plans. So that there is the garden plan, the book. Okay. Super simple. I hope you guys enjoyed learning that bit about keeping, um, the garden plan 
your garden calendar and um, how awesome these little stickies are. And I'm gonna go get to work. The trailer's gone out from outside, so I can totally do that. And I like to have a pen. This is my gold pen. This is a space pen. You can write upside down with it. I love having these and I always have a good Sharpie. Where's my, there it is. So I always have another Sharpie. This time I just happen to have a gold one. It's literally the only Sharpie I have right now. The rest of them are gone. I used to have a huge Sharpie collection. So these two are mine and I will use them for everything. Um, and everybody in the trailer, our house knows like these are moms and they'll know like, Hey, I'm looking for my gold pen. I'm looking for my Sharpie and they have it on hand. Um, we'll go through catalogs next time and show you how we go about looking in and through our catalogs and getting these organized and showing you again how I line everything up with that and hopefully it helps you in your seed searching and garden planning for 2020. Thanks guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, I'll see you guys next time. God bless.